Empress of Tokyo calling Lady Bird. Empress of Tokyo calling Lady Bird. Viking calling Lady Bird. Viking calling Lady Bird. Alopango Emergency Air Base calling the Lady Bird. Viking calling Lady Bird. Empress of Tokyo calling Lady Bird. Come in, please. Alopango Emergency Air Base calling the Lady Bird. Come in, please. Air Base calling the Lady Bird. Come in, please. The radio must be dead, sir. Contact every ship in the vicinity again. But they're all calling on broadcasting signals, sir. If they had a report, they'd contact us. Obey orders, Corporal. What is it, Whitey? The uh, Marine Base radioed again. I want to know if we've seen anything of the Lady Bird. Tell them we're keeping a good lookout. But they want to know our position. Give my position about 350 miles northeast of Palopango. Aye, aye, sir. Wait a minute. Captain Dawson, could they tell from your radio signals how close you are to Palopango? Not a chance, Barton. They haven't any directional radio finder on it. Just the same, if uh, they try to race us again, don't answer. I'm captain of this ship, and I'll give the orders. All right. You're captain of this ship. But Whitey, forget about Palopango and that missing plane. But let me know if you get a code message from Kuching. Right. Doc, I want to let our Chinese friend know he'll have his guns as soon as we can get them from upriver. Look here, Barton. I've been cruising around here long enough waiting for those guns. Yes, and you'll keep cruising around until I see a chance to get them out without having those Marines from Palo Pango on our necks. Well, I'm tired of waiting. And if that cargo of yours isn't aboard by tomorrow, I'm heading this ship back to Hong Kong. Yeah? This ship was shorted to me for the purpose of delivering those guns to Ching. And he stays here until I say differently. My dear Oliver, you really shouldn't argue with our friend, the captain. You're not handling your natives now. You can believe them from one end of the island to the other, but when you're aboard my ship, remember what I say goes. Sure it goes. That's the way I handled mutiny when I was Captain Bly on the bounty. Palopango Emergency Air Base calling the Ladybird. demonstrated that your new gadget cuts fuel consumption in half. We have enough gas to fly to the South Pole. I'm not dressed for the South Pole. Oh, the penguins will be mine. And the publicity will make you rich. So relax and dream about all the money you're going to make out of it. Well, if money would make me as careless as yours makes you, I'll take poverty. That's gratitude. You're the last inventor I'll ever lose. Quiet, the radio's on. Empress of Tokyo calling Lady Bird. Come in, please. Lady Bird. Come in, please. Lady Bird. Come in, please. I hear you calling me. Quiet. This is the Lady Bird. Thanks, Viking. Thanks, Empress Tokyo. I'll talk with Palo Pango. Hello, Palo Pango. All OK now. Go ahead. There they are, sir. Max. Hello, Max. How's Virginia? I've been worried to death. She's OK, George, but confidentially, she needs a little discipline. Your sister thinks flying the Pacific is like leaping across a duck pond. Stool pigeon. Hello, Georgie, darling. This is the first fun we've had since those Siberian tribesmen tried to shoot us down for an overgrown eagle. And how are all your cute little Marines? This is no time to be flipped. 
Report your position. And I'll expect to hear from you every 15 minutes. Half hour, sweet. I'm not one of your seagoing soldiers. You ought to be overjoyed that we're coming 500 miles on Pacific course just to see you, you... you old Levenek. What is your position? Take it, Mac. Turn it off, Whitey. Doc, I believe I've got it. I think Lieutenant Orton's sister is the answer to our prayers. My dear Oliver, why keep me in... Captain, I think you're going to get your cargo. If what I'm planning works, the lieutenant will have enough worry to make him keep his nose out of our business. Sergeant, you better check on Thornton and Barnes and see that they're keeping a sharp lookout. Yes, sir. Faster with that cooling system. Say, Stripes, there's one thing I can't figure out. What's that? Lieutenant Alton's a swell officer, all right, but with all that dough he and his sister have, why does he want a soldier in a forsaken place like this? Money doesn't mean anything to the Alton's. First one hitchhiked on the Mayflower. Another one invented a new way to scalp the Indians and conquer the West. And from the newspaper reports, the latest one is dizzy enough to think that flying around the world is a laugh. Yeah, more money than brains, I guess. I uh, wish I had some of it. Which? What? Ah, money, you dope. Hey, Stripes. I can't understand why a swell looker like her doesn't get married. Hey, Muzzler. Will you figure out how to make our play for the CO, sister? Remove your paw or I'll bite it off. Of course not. I was just thinking a little, that's all. Well, stop thinking or we'll get into more trouble. Stay on your feet, here comes the sergeant. Adjust those hats. Button up those shirts. Fix those neckties. Chest out and stomach in. Now get these orders and get them straight. When the plane lands, you'll bring Miss Allerton and Mr. Raft ashore. And when you meet the lieutenant's sister, try and be gentlemen. Gentlemen? Why, we're always gentlemen. You shut know up. That. Just because your father, Senator of Virginia. Maryland, sir. Shut up. Being a senator's son don't make you a gentleman. It's actions that count. And here's another thing. If I get you two birds trying any of your unfunny tricks while that lady's at this post, I'll make you wish you never saw the Marine Corps. At ease. Attention. At ease. Attention. Not good, but probably the best you birds can do. If I get my hands on that guy without his shepherds on, I'll tear him apart inch by inch. You're to blame for this, asking the CO for this detail. Why, you blubbering moocher. What would you be without me? A sergeant. It's you that got me busted, talking me to helping you prove the two Marines was better than six sailors. Too bad you didn't get your head busted before you talked me into this transfer. Come to the South Sea, Stripes, old boy. It's full of romance and adventure. Beautiful native maidens dancing around coral-studded beaches. You sleep on a bed of banana leaves. Sip milk from coconuts. Coconuts to you. Just the chest of my feet ahead, Doc. Oliver, do you realize what I could have done to Wellington at Waterloo if I had had a shortwave radio? Don't tell me, Doc. You were also Napoleon. What? Napoleon would have amounted to nothing if my spirit hadn't motivated his destiny. Let's forget all those other lives of yours and try to remember who you are now. Dr. Cincinnati speaks the imminent ethnology. That's the stuff, Doctor. And don't forget to play your part. When I was David Garrick, the great actor. But I am Dr. Cincinnati speaks. That's really me. What were you, Doc, in the Cenozoic era? An ape, king of the apes. <laughs> what a change. Anyway, Doc, don't make a mistake and mention all the jails you've lived in. Oh, Oliver! Who can that be?
Uh, it's only Barton's plane. So how do you figure that guy? How should I know? I haven't been here long enough to pick up any of that island gossip. All I know is what that slave driving sergeant says. Barton's was mixed up in plenty of things, you know, soldier of fortune, pearl fishing, rum running. That's how he got his bankroll to open up the trading post here at Palo Pango. Yeah, lucky guy. Well, youngster, you're almost there, but a bit late. Palo Pango, the Isle of Lost Souls. I'll take that bar of chocolate now. I'm going down to welcome Miss Allerton. Tell Dr. Spriggs to meet me at the pier. Remember, you're meeting society. Don't worry, I'm gonna do my duty, soldier. Nothing more. Well, well, look at the cute little evidence. Max, hand me my bag, please. Wisecracker. Did you get a load of that kisser? She chews the back of it. Yeah. Welcome to Palo Pango, Miss Alderton. Now, isn't that sweet? Welcome to Palo Pango. Is that all you have to offer? Well, we're to convey the Commandant's compliments and take you ashore, that's all. How perfectly military. What do I do, Salute? Well, you might wipe your kisser. You know, the uh, CO is pretty particular about appearances. Oh. <laughs> Max, why didn't you tell me? I can't have these handsome gentlemen see me like this. There you are, miss. At your service. Well, at least there's one gentleman present. Please wipe my kisser, Mr. Uh, uh, Barnes, Miss. Private Millard Barnes. We call him Millie. Take Miss Allerton in, fellas, and then come back to me. I want to check things over. Yes, sir. All aboard, Miss. Take it away. <laughs> That's what you get for double-crossing me, wise guy. I ought to slug you for telling her my name. So you washed her face, huh? <laughs> so what? Give her an inch and she'll take the ocean. Uh, you're right, Stripes. You ought to give her the treatment. The ocean? Say, it's not a bad idea. What? One of us helps her overside. The distance between the gunnel and the dock begins to uh, split and splash. We have a perfect three-point landing. What about the CO? How do you get soft? Okay. You're right. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll match it. The, the one that wins does the dirty work, huh? All right, I'll take heads. Tails, just my luck. So the Alladins are looking for a place to light. Well, we'll make her a mermaid. We're almost there, Miss Alladin. Uh, time to get up, miss. I must have fallen asleep. Yeah, you did. I'm glad Max didn't see me. Why's that? Oh, he thinks I'm about to fold up and threatens to call off the rest of the trip. Said his new supercharger isn't as important as my health. Maybe he's right. We're on the home stretch. 
I can last a few more days, I hope. Well, I guess maybe we had you wrong. You can be human. You mean because I was so flip when we first met? Sorry if I seem silly. <laughs> You're okay. Thanks, soldier. <laughs> I better help you, Miss Lawton. Hello, Virginia. How are you? Hello, Georgie. Uh, it's good to see you, sis. But you had us all worried. Haven't you any confidence in the luck of the Alderton's? Well, I suppose I should have, knowing you all my life. <laughs> oh, gosh, it's good to see you. Oh, oh Virginia. I want you to meet Mr. Barton and Dr. Spriggs. This is my sister, Virginia, gentlemen. How do you do, Miss Oliphant? How do you We're do? We're greatly relieved that having met one of our iron typhoons, you have safely conquered. <laughs> it was fun while it lasted. Uh, Lieutenant, I don't think you have very suitable quarters for a lady at your barracks. I would like to place my house at your sister's disposal. Well, thanks, Barton. Why, that would be lovely if it wouldn't be imposing. Of course not. I'd be honored. Your, uh... Get the boat tied up, Barnes. Timing double cross are you? Oh, now, wait a minute, Millie. We had her all wrong. She's a swell person. What did she do? Give you a kiss in the cabin, you big pushover, you? Well, sis, this is Palo Pango. It's a rather picturesque looking place, isn't it? What's the matter? Did the big soft senator's boy get his pants wet? <laughs> I'll get you for this. <laughs> about your remarkable experiences. You certainly have lived a lot. <laughs> quite true, quite true. Buddha could remember 800 incarnations. I can remember 802. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor is always so modest, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Corporal. Hello, Barnes. So what are you all dressed up for? You're not figuring on crashing Barton's party, are you? Oh, you know how it is, Corporal. A guy's got to keep up his appearances or he'd go native. Oh, by the way, uh, weather report come in yet? Yeah, I just finished making copies of it. Swell, how about me taking them to the CO? Okay, Barnes, that'll save me a trip. Oh, that's nice. Uh, <clears throat> mind if I have a smoke? Say, don't you ever buy any cigarettes? Oh, you know it is. A little short, little payday. Okay, help yourself. Hey, wait a minute, one at a time. <laughs> that's what I got. Uh, <clears throat> You're a pal. See you later, Corporal. Max, haven't you any influence over Virginia? I'd like her to stay here for a few days, at least. Weather report, sir. Yeah, Max, here's the document you've been waiting for. Thanks. Oh, this is splendid. It's also the weekly report. George. It seems to me that uh, Private Barnes and Thornton do everything around here. May I offer Mr. Barnes some refreshments? Of course, Miss Oliver. Thank you, sir. Come along. Plain hide and go seek, Stretch? Who, me? No. Of course not. I was just uh, looking for something. <laughs> Say, Josie, uh, did the weather report come in yet? Weather report? Yeah, sure. It just came in. Well, brother, I'm about to do you a favor. I'll take it over to the CO for you. Well, now, that is big harder to be with stripes. Here it is, all made up. Oh, don't make Say, how about a cigarette? Gee, thanks, Josie. You're a little short of cash until payday, aren't you? Say, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> well, that's all right. Take the whole pack. You feeling all right? Fine. That's what I thought. 
You're a great guy, Jonesy. <laughs> a great guy. How are you, Stripes? A great guy. <laughs> you rat. <laughs> Lieutenant, thank you. Doctor, Mr. Ralph asked me a question about the island that I couldn't answer. Perhaps you can. I know it backwards. Been coming here for hundreds of years. Well, why do they call it the Island of Lost Souls? Well, in the old days, when we pirates roamed the seas, this was one of the hideouts. Until man sprouted his mechanical wings, no nation claimed it. My, how we used to rollick and cavort here. <laughs> Naturally, the present natives are of nondescript origin. In other words, a genesis unknown or lost. Get it? <laughs> Then there should be buried treasure. Oh, no. Pirates carefully watched each other. And beyond that, this island has always been a relay point for international gun runners. But why live in the past when the future is so uh, profitable? <laughs> Let's look at this report again. Well, there's only one low pressure area. Weather report, sir. There seems to be a lot of interest in the weather around here. Did you say the weather? Well, uh, this isn't exactly my duty. I just thought that I'd help out. <laughs> Come over here, Barnes. You two boys know each other, don't you? Oh, yes. Hello, Stripes. That'll be all. You men are excused. Oh, no, they're not, Georgie. I'm very flattered they're so interested in our trip. None of your silly old discipline. I'm sure Mr. Barnes would enjoy another glass of orange aid. And Mr. Thornton could definitely stand a cooling off if um, Mr. Barton doesn't mind. No, indeed not. Uh, what would it be, gentlemen? I'll, I'll have, have an orange aid. Yes, sir. Here, take this and drink it. All of it, sir? All of it. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Barnes. Yes, sir. Part of that orange aid is for you. Huh? Oh, uh, I mean, sir? You heard me. Splendid tactics, Lieutenant. As General of the American Army, I never did better. The General of the American Army is still living, Doctor. Oh, no. Not George Washington, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't the boys join us? Don't be so snobbish about it. I'm sorry, sis, but I must observe military etiquette. Those two are the best soldiers I've got. Separated, they'd be tops in any man's army, but they won't separate. And if I fail to hold them down, one day they're going to put this island on their backs and swim away with it. Then I'd encourage them, Georgie. Well, occasionally I have to shake the iron fist. I don't think you do. And you stuffed shirts can bore yourselves if you like, but I know where the fun is. <laughs> Excuse me? Take your mug out of that soup. Here comes the princess. <laughs> Take a walk with Emily. That's what I was going to say. Why don't you beat it? That's what I thought. Hello. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Uh, I think I neglected to thank you boys for bringing me in this afternoon. Oh, no, oh, I'm too it glad to do it. A little orange aid? No, thanks. Oh, I forgot my purse in the other room. Uh, purse? Uh... Will you get it, Millie? Confidentially, Miss Oliver, I want to warn you about something. About what? Well, it's about Barnes. He's, he's a very good friend of mine, but I feel you should know this. He's, uh, he's the uh, type of fellow uh, who, uh, well, uh, you know what I mean. He's, he's an opportunist. He's, he's always after something. What do you mean? Oh, uh, don't misunderstand me. In, in your case, he probably wants you to put in a good word to the CEO, you know, for a promotion. I see. Then I should be on my guard. Oh, definitely. He's really uh, unscrupulous. He's uh, the type I of understand. Up. Thanks. Oh, I knew you would. Oh, well, here he comes. Here it is. Thanks. Well, where's the rest of it? Oh, is there more? My compact. I didn't ask for it because I didn't want you to notice my shiny nose. <laughs> shiny nose. <laughs> I'll be the patsy. Oh. I don't want you to think that. You get it, Stripes. Me? Yeah, she said you. <laughs> I 
suppose he tried to pull a fast one, huh? No, he was just telling me what good friends you two were. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, we've been together for three years, but... Uh... But what? Well, uh... You see, uh, I hate to leave him alone with a dame. Uh, I mean, a lady. <laughs> Is he dangerous? Is he? Hmm. And unscrupulous, too. You don't mean... Oh, is he? <laughs> right here. Now hurry up and get the rest of the bunch, and I'll give you the signal win. Of course, in your case, your brother being the commander. Ah, I see. You mean he might ask me to get him a promotion? Oh, it's a cinch. Of course, don't get me wrong. You know, we're pals. <laughs> Here's your compact. Thanks. Thank you, Stripes. You know, there's one thing I like about you two. Oh, yes? What's that? Your loyalty to each other. <laughs> oh, yes, he's, he's a nice fellow. He's a uh, great, great guy, Stripes. Nice of your stripes. Oh, think nothing of it. I knew you'd like it. You know, it's too bad you're not going to be around a little longer. Yes. Maybe you're right. That is, man. Talk to you, youngster. This is one night you're turning in early. But I'm not sleepy. You will be when those motors vibrate tomorrow. Come along. Good night, boys. I've had a swell time. Thank you. If I might offer a suggestion, Miss Oliphant, I would follow the coastline in heading for Wong. Don't try to cut across the island. But we can save an hour that way. Well, you better take the coast. It's dangerous over the jungle, and I've only had many miles to your trip. Very well. But I'm surprised at you, George. The Arlington mails must be getting soft. Good night, Mr. Barton. Good night. I'll be waiting for you at Wong. Waiting? I'll take off what you do, of course. Do you really believe you can beat us? Certainly. That's a challenge, Mr. Barton. Uh, would you care to uh, make a friendly wager? Make it easy on yourself. Well, suppose we say uh, $5,000. 5000 And I'll pick up your check at Guam. I'll be waving it at you from the ground. <laughs> May the best ship win. And I'll say good night and thanks for the lovely evening. Good night. Good night, George. I'll see you in the morning. And you too, Max. Good night, boys. Good night, Miss Oliver. Good night. Come on, Dopey. Snow White's gone. Thornton, Barnes. Yes, sir. Report at the pier at 5.30 tomorrow morning for Miss Alderton's departure. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. My dear Oliver, I'm wondering if you'll be paying the lady with the wings that wager. Your plane isn't as fast as hers. Well, we'll try to make the race interesting for her. If she reaches Wong first, she'll collect. Ah, I see. <laughs>
set to take Miss Alderton out to the plane? Yes, sir. Say, Sarge, Millie and I were just wondering why Miss Alderton doesn't stay and visit with the lieutenant for a while. So what? Perhaps the lady has more to do than visit us. Did you get Mr. Raft out to that plane? Yes, Sarge. How about Barton and Spriggs? Are they out there? Yes, Sarge. Yes, Sarge. Will you stop yes, Sarge, and me? Yes, Sergeant. Oh, so the boys want to play, do they? All right. I'll make corporals out of you two birds, just so as I can break you. Not me, Sergeant, dear. You'll have to hurry. That guy will soon be all yours, Millie. If we don't drown him before my enlistment is up. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Say, Stripes, when you re-enlist, let's get a transfer to Panama. Boy, I know a place down there. They got the most beautiful, the Get most away gorgeous. from me with that song and dance. Even if I do re-enlist, there'll be no more of your transfer schemes for me. Ah, uh, Stripes. Let me hear from you, sis. Please be careful. I'll report regularly. But I can't be too careful to go on, or Mr. Barton will beat me. Goodbye. Careful. Thanks, Virginia. I just wanted to tell you that stuff I told you about Barnes last night was the bunk. He's really a grand guy. I know it's right. He's a first-class engineer. He knows all there is to know about air pullers. If he would ever leave the Marine Corps, he'd, he'd go places. And he's not looking for a promotion? No. <laughs> he's a two-fisted straight shooter. But uh, don't tell him I said so. I won't. And thanks for telling me, Stripes. <laughs> Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to tell you. Uh, it's about Barton. Uh, be careful of that guy. He's a phony. Hmm. Thanks, soldier. What would you suggest? Well, uh, the race to Guam, you'll beat him, but uh, after that, brush him off, as Millie would say. Oh, I almost forgot. I hope those aren't even smoke by the time I get there. Just my brand. Well, Miss Virginia. Yes, Millie? There's something very important I'd like to tell you before you leave us. Of course, Millie. I think I see what's been happening to some of our quartermaster supplies, Sergeant. Take a look. Wouldn't want Stripes to know I told you all this. It isn't his fault he had to go to college. He's a grand guy just the same. That's fine, Millie. Thanks. I'm glad you told me. Now, there's something very, very important I want to tell you. Sounds exciting. It sure is. It's about that faker, Barton. Look out for him. I know all about him. It's all right if I beat him into Guam. But after that, brush him off. Give him the air. Have no truck with him. Yes, uh, have no truck with him. Oh, uh, there's something I'd like to give you, just for a little remembrance. Just my brand. Thank you, Millie. Does this mean garbage detail, sir? It does. Well, Doctor, it should be an interesting race. <laughs> Most interesting.
Falcon's running away from us. What? The Falcon. Look. Martin passed us while you were dreaming. Oh, well. He can't keep that speed for long. For the love of Pete, I thought this was a race. Oh, don't get so excited, Max. It isn't that important. Say, what hit you at Palopango? A couple of Marine sharpshooters? I didn't know anything hit me. No. Come on, Virginia. Which one was it? What makes you think there is one? You're not fooling me. You've been flying like an automaton ever since we left. You're in love, girl. Well, I am. It's my own funeral. Yeah? Well, it's likely to be mine if you don't snap out of it. Wave goodbye to the Falcon before it gets out of sight, Virginia. It's not going to get out of sight, except behind us. That's the spirit. Spoken like a soldier sweetheart. That isn't funny. Why don't you take your nose out of my affairs and put it in that map where it belongs? Sorry, Virginia. Here goes nose. Idiot. bills and have him counted twice. This has to be good, Doc, for a plan to succeed. So hold on. Something's wrong with Barton's plane. Looks like he's out of control. Can you see him? No, I can't. You better circle around. What a place to crack up. If he was able to straighten out before he hit the water, he should be all right. Some important friends of mine. Uh, girl in plane. Yes, but don't ask so many questions. Girl pretty? What difference does it make? No one girl here. I told you to get in the house. Now go on and stay there. Come on, Doc. Men, get undercover for a while. Take the natives under the hut. Come on, Doc. I'm all right, but 
still a little out of breath from being draped over the wheel back there. I wonder if Barton landed all right. Come on, let's see. And I hadn't any idea that you would follow. Uh, Dr. Spriggs has been doing a little excavating at the edge of the jungle swamp. I was anxious to pick up some specimens, as I wanted to send them from Guam to catch the next clipper to New York. I figured it would only take us a short time and uh, that I could still beat you to Guam. But why the stunts, Barton? Oh, that's a failing of mine. I, I get a great kick out of stunting, and it amuses the doctor. It's very exhilarating. It stirs the eagle's blood in me. I'd like to get word to my brother as quickly as possible. Oh, yes, of course I... I'll go immediately and check your plane and see what parts are needed. Then we can fly back to the base and pick them up. Uh, doctor, you wait here. I won't be long. I think I'll check the plane with Barton. I'll go with you, Max. I'd try and stay out of the sun, Miss Ollerton. That's right, Virginia. We won't be long. I have some records here. I'd like to show you. Barton! Oh, Barton! Yeah? I'll look the plane over with you. All right. Come on. Remarkable, isn't it? All the modern improvements in the heart of the jungle. Almost streamlined, I'd say. Yes. It reminds me of the days when I was composing Tannhauser. Now, don't tell me you composed that opera. Oh, yes. how hitting a stump could have broken our radio like that. Well, accidents often do quick things, you know. We should get a message to Ollerton. How about using the radio on your plane? Unfortunately, it went out yesterday. I'm going to have it fixed in warm. Oh, there's a radio at the house. We can use that. Oh, that's been out of use for months. It's odd, Barton. Our radio's broken. Yours doesn't work, and the one at the house is out of use. It's an annoying coincidence, isn't it? Especially at a time like this. Yes. Unfortunate for us. How about letting me see your radio? Maybe I can fix it. Why worry about it, Ralph? Doc and I are flying into the base this afternoon and we'll notify all of them. We won't talk to you. I'll go ahead. Barton. Barton. Wait a minute, Ralph. I thought I told you to stay in the house. Well, why are you bring white woman here? What's the matter? You jealous? When'd she go? She's going away tomorrow. Does that make you happy? What are you doing, Raph? These fell on the wing when I opened the door. I want to take a look at your radio to see if I can fix it. I told you I was going to have it fixed in Guam. There's no reason why I should lie to you. Listen, Barton, I didn't say anything before, but I'm telling you now. There's something wrong. I don't understand you. Well, I'm beginning to understand you. That cutoff up there and your fall were phony. A deliberate plan to bring us down here, just why, I don't know. Unless it has something to do with that gun-running message I just read. Your mind is working overtime, Raph. Imaginative or not, I'm responsible for Miss Ollerton. And I'm going to see if your radio works.
Fortunately, there's comparatively little damage to your plane. Good. I'll well, say, Doc, we're taking off to Palo Pongo in a little while. Where's Max? Oh, he'll be here in a moment. Perhaps we'd better go down and see what's keeping him. Yes, I, uh, I think it's a good idea. I'd like to be in Palo Pongo before dark. This way, Miss Allerton. Why, the plane's been moved. Yes. Raft thought it might be better to have it out of the water. There'd be less difficulty in making repairs. So I had some of the natives pull it on shore. Where could Max have gone? He was here working on the plane when I left for the house. He must be around somewhere. I think we should look for him. You better stay right here, Miss Allerton. A few yards off the path, and you'll be lost in the jungle. We'll find him. Come on, Doc. My dear Olive, what happened to our friend? I really don't know, Doctor. Unfortunately, he got in the way of a poison dart. Dear, dear. Alive one moment, corpus delicti the next. I wonder what the penalty is for murder on the islands, uh, Oliver. Forget it. But this isn't going to change our plans. Tonight, when neither plane shows up at one, and there's no word over the air, every ship in this side of the Pacific will start searching. Just as you planned. Yeah, but uh, I'm sorry about Raft, though. Well, if Raft strayed off, all the jungle swallowed him up. Yeah, such things have happened before. Say, Corp. Any news yet? No, there's no news yet. Why don't you guys stop annoying me? You think Miss Alton wants to be bothered with you during a race? We just thought she'd keep us posted. Hey, what's the idea of bringing that urn in here? Hey, not so loud. The CO might hear you. I don't care who hears me. Go on, get that thing out of here. All right. Go on, get out. Take it easy. Take it easy, will you? And don't come back. If you get a report, will you send us a note? Jones, now I know you're a rat. They're beating those drums like that. Maybe tribe look jungle for your friend. Didn't Mr. Barton say when he'd be back, or hasn't he sent word? He'll not tell me. You like Mr. Barton? Like him? <laughs> I hardly know him, Enda. You lie. Me no. He make love to you. Oh, that's silly. You love him, don't you? Me, my husband. He'll not come back. Better you go, too. But I must wait for Mr. Rand. Maybe he'll not come, too. No, could you stay here? You mean the natives? That's why they're beating the drums. Go, that's all. Me sure you could wait for jungle. But Mr. Barton said he'd take us back to Palopango in the morning. Him not take you. Come now, go your room. Why to my room? 
Wenn vom Tribe kommt, Haus, look for me. Du frightened. Very well, Linda. Tomorrow, tomorrow we go. Good night. Down at the beach, ready to go. Only about a hundred cases more to go down the river. And in ten days, Fu Ching will again be in the munition business. By this time, the missing lady bird will have given Captain Lawson an excuse to circle around this vicinity. Apparently, looking for the plane. Oliver, did you ever have a vision? No, Doc, but I'll bet you've had plenty. I just had one, a couple of feet before my eyes. More reincarnation, I suppose. Not reincarnation. I incarceration, my dear Oliver. What are you talking about, Doc? I had a vision of the lovely Miss Ollerton finding out that we were engaged in the antisocial enterprise of gun running. You know what that would mean? How would she find out? She thinks we're out looking for rap. Shh! Pianissimo, my dear Oliver. The young lady is even now just round the corner, eavesdropping. I'm terribly disappointed in Miss Oliphant, listening in on a private conversation. The jungle must have corrupted her good manners. Undoubtedly. We should do something about it. Yes, we should. You wait here, Doc. I'll be back in a little while. Virginia Ollerton calling Palopango. Please come in, Palop. I'm sorry, Miss Ollerton, but I never allow guests to use the radio without my permission. Where's Max? You said you were going to look for him. We looked for him. Why are you lying? Is Max dead? 
I'm really sorry, Miss Allerton. He is. Hello, Pango, Emergency Air Base, calling Guam Naval Station. Come in, please. Guam Naval Station, Proceed, Hello, Pango. Guam, Lieutenant Commander Preston. This is Lieutenant Allerton speaking. This is Preston, Lieutenant. Sorry, we've had no word yet. Not a word from the plane has been picked up here. It begins to look serious, Lieutenant. I can't understand one of the planes not coming through. We'll broadcast for an immediate search and send out all available planes. <laughs> Turn in and take a nap. No, I'd rather keep looking. You know what I can't understand is both planes fail to reach Guam and don't sound off on the air. Hey, Stripes. I wonder if she tried to cut across the island. I was thinking that too, Millie. Remember the lieutenant and Barton told her it was too dangerous? That might be enough to make her try it. Hey, we're, we're turning around. What's up? I don't know. Hey, Sarge, what are we turning for? We run out of fuel. I'm going back to the base. The base? You can't do that. Suppose the plane's floating around somewhere. Now look, Stripes, I'm doing the best I can. We'll reload and come out again. Listen, Riker, you're heading a straight course for Guam if we have to roll. Take your hands off of me, or I'll put you under arrest for insubordination. Do you hear? Why, Come you... on, Stripes. Sarge knows what he's doing, and he's right. Come on, you guys. Keep your eyes on the water. What do you think, this is a picnic? <laughs> Lights and change the oil because we'll be shoving off again before sundown. Mark, don't forget to be properly shocked when we meet Allerton and he tells us that his sister never reached Guam. has just landed. The launch is going to pick them up. Let's get out to the pier. Say, Barton, what happened to you? We came down with a broken fuel pump at the other end of the island. Well, what about Miss Allerton? What do you mean? Did she go right through the warm? No, I haven't had a word from her since she took off. No word, huh? No. That certainly sounds bad, Thompson. Yeah. Well. Come on, jump in. Should have radioed the base, Martin. Every available ship between here and Guam is searching for you and Miss Oliver. My radio's been out. When did you last see the Ladybird? After we came down, it passed over us, headed for Guam. Never reached there. Did Miss Allerton's motor show any signs of trouble? No, none at all. I remember you mentioned, Oliver, that you would be writing a check for the young lady in Guam. It's all very distressing. We'll refuel after I see the lieutenant and join in the search at once. Do you think the Lady Bird tried to cut across the island? No, we, we both kept to the coastline. About 50 miles out, I developed engine trouble. Lucky you didn't try to go over the island and have to land in the jungle. You're right there, Thornton. Would have been out of luck. Ben, 
Where is he, Bud? In West Virginia. I don't know, Lieutenant. Your man just told me that she didn't reform. Hey, Lug, this arrow's probably poisoned. If you'd have grabbed it, we'd have been playing taps over you. That's another one I owe you, Stripes. Ah, oh, skip it. You know Barton's lying? Probably give him the same song and dance to the CO right now. According to this little gadget, it was down all right. Back in the jungle somewhere. Yeah, we've got to find out where. Let's talk this over with the CO. Okay. I knew Barton and Spriggs would give the CO the same line he gave us. Hey, Stripes, maybe we got Barton all wrong. No, we haven't. That dot didn't get stuck on the plane 5,000 feet in the air or at sea. It came from the jungle. Barton's lying for some reason. Even though he is lying, the CO can't figure any reason or motive for it. Or how his landing in the jungle could possibly affect Miss Orton's plane. Neither can I, but my hunch says it does, and that puts it up to us. Let's go out the plane before he takes off. Hey, Stripes, remember what the CO said? You're taking a chance in your own responsibility. I'll take it. If I can get to the river cove before Barton takes off, I'll check his flight from there. Good. Mr. Gosser, he joined in the searching party for Miss Allerton. Thank you, Sergeant. I also wish to report that Private Barnes took one of the launches without permission. Yes? He was seen going towards the river cove. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, that's all, Sergeant. And another thing. Private Thornton has disappeared. Well, that'll be all, Sergeant. But, Lieutenant, they... That'll be all, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Oh, just a minute. Keep an extra man in the radio room and have him bring me any messages as soon as they're received. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. I think we've made our last landing here. I always feel a tinge of sorrow when I leave surroundings that have become endeared to me. Take it easy, Doc. Pango Emergency Air Base. Calling Palo Pango Emergency Air Base.
stripes. Stripes! Foreman, reporting for duty. Quiet. The technique is bad. Gentlemen should always be quiet climbing in and out of windows. Gee, am I glad to see you, soldier. How did you get here? Billy and I suspected Barton had something to do with your disappearance. So I stowed away in the plane. Where's Raff? Barton said he was dead. They killed him. The rats. Gee, that's a tough break. Now, now, keep your chin up. We'll get out of this somehow. And... Send a message to the base to tell the lieutenant how to get here. We'll stall until they do. Barton! Barton, come quick. What's the matter? Soldier in girl's room. What? My, my, those marines. You're liable to find them anywhere. You stay here with the doc. Towie, get your men around the house. Stripes, you're a darling. Lady? That's one thing you should never tell the Marines. You better sit over there while I keep sentry duty. Change my mind about waiting for Millie and the bunch. Let's get going now. But we can't leave. We couldn't get through the jungle. Well, we can go over it. You can fly Barton's plane, can't you? Of course, but how can we get to it? Well, one Marine is supposed to be good for 20 natives. If the odds aren't any worse than that, we're... Are you game? Wherever you go, soldier. Come on. Stripes. Yeah? Before you tackle those odds, I want to tell you how swell it was. You're coming up here alone. You know why I came? Well, why did you? I was just itching for a good fight, that's all. That's all? What do you think? any good, Thornton? That's what you think. The place is pretty well surrounded. And if you expect any help from the base, don't count too much on it. We haven't forgotten there's a plane around here. We'll use that if you don't object too much. Not at all, Thornton. It'd be a pleasure to have a famous flyer at the controls. Get going. Say, Barton. Better tell those monkeys outside to hold up. One peep out of them will be the last thing you'll ever hear. All right, soldier. I'll try to arrange it so that we both have it. Stick close to me, honey. <coughs> Better get the news, Barton. No gunfire. 
crowd, all of you. Okay, soldier. We gotta get out of here in a hurry. To Inda, what are you doing here? I mean, look for husband. I mean, not in way. Me only want to help. If you want to help, you do as you're told. No. Me afraid you keep white girl. No love me no more. You kill. White men come. White men are coming here? No, oh, soldiers come by river.
try to be the hero. Sergeant, take your men in there and find Private Staunton and Barnes. Yes, sir. Mike, Morgan. If anything should happen to Stripes, George, I'd... Well, well, so that's the way it is, huh, honey? Oh, all right. Get up out of here. Come on. Oh, uh, you would come in and spoil all the fun. Yeah, just when we was getting hot. Hey, Millie, the plane, back to Virginia. Wait a minute, you guys. You're through playing heroes. Miss Ollerton is back there safe with the CO. <laughs> oh, but listen, Sarge. Shut up! I... Take these prisoners to the launch. But, Sarge, we... Shut up! You get going. All right, come on, you guys. You know, I shot that guy last night, but it was only a dream. Uh, where do you think you're going, Doc? I haven't the slightest idea. I just received orders that you're to report in Honolulu for the trial of Dr. Spriggs, Lawson, and Mrs. Barton. Yes, sir. There's a boat that puts in the day after tomorrow. You'll take it. Your enlistment expires on that day, doesn't it? Yes, sir. I hope that you're planning to re-enlist. You'd make a splendid officer in this service, Thornton, if you just cut out those private wars of yours and get down to soldiering. Thank you, sir, but uh, I've decided to take up aviation. Well, that's a very fine profession. I wish you good luck in it. I wonder, sir, as long as I have to go to Honolulu if uh, I can't fly with Miss Oliver. Well, I'm sorry, Thornton, but I think you'd better take the boat. But it would be a lot quicker if you've got plenty of time. Well, uh, if it's because you think I can't handle the controls, why, your sister will tell you I... I said no, Thornton. But uh, you haven't asked her. That's right, Georgie. He's really become a splendid flyer. No. You mean I... Can't fly to Honolulu with Miss Orlick. That's exactly what I mean. Thank you, sir. Uh, but I could uh, make. That's enough. What? That's enough. Boy, oh, Virginia, are you all ready to take off for Honolulu in the morning? Yes, sir. Good. That's all. Uh, I could act as co pilot, sir. I said no, Thornton. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. No, Georgie? Yes. Oh. How do you do, Miss Oliver? Hmm? How do you do, Doctor? <laughs> oh, uh, Doctor, do you have a service tomorrow? No. Oh. That's um, all I wanted to know. I wonder what she meant by that, Lieutenant. Well, I think it has something to do with an airplane flight, Doctor. 
A very long airplane flight. something. Forgot something? Yeah. <laughs> Your telephone number, remember? Oh, yes. I'm so sorry, Millie, but you know how it is. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that big lug. Listen, wise guy, when there's any telephone numbers around, I'll take them, as usual. Not anymore. There's a Mrs. Thornton now. Ah, ah, ah. Did you get that, you big mug? Oh, Tango and Silas and Lars Barnes signing off.